From Mountain Home to Raft River, we've got all the District 4 analysis you'll need to know. This is the Magic Valley PrepCast with Scott Burton. That's right. Welcome in another edition of the Magic Valley PrepCast on IdahoSports.com, your weekly breakdown of everything going on District 4 in the state of Idaho. Brandon Bainey joined once again by Scott Burton coming to us from uh, Jerome High School. Scott, what's shaking? Oh, boy, just trying to wrap up the end of the year, and it is – it is crazy this time of year. I mean, you think you finished spring sports, you're on the downward slide. Uh, it's it's just a whole new set of things to deal with now. But glad to be here, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Yeah, let's. I mean, let's do it. Let's dive right into it because we have got a jam packed oh show word. to get to. So many spring sports championships. Uh, real quick, can I ask you? In the fall, it seems like we kind of give each sport their own weekend right it's state cross country and then the next week it's state soccer and then it's you know state volleyball and then it's the football championships spring sports it's all condensed to one weekend is that because of the calendar is it because like we just want to be done for the school year what's the what's the reasoning behind that scott uh you know i think it's just a, a lot of the calendar and the way that it works out you know because you can you know, it, it's it's a seasonal thing because you're you know you're working outside and you can only start x amount of time, but you have to be done by this amount of time. You know, so it's just the way that it works out. But you're right, it, spring sports is just a different animal. I mean, you get your fall sports, which is absolutely crazy time of year because there's so much going on, and now you're going to have golf in there. You know, starting next year for the four A five A's, and then winter. Winter sports is all combined and um, it's just inside and then spring hits and it is, it's a whole new set of problems and it's so different. And then spring sports state weekend is unlike any other. Yes. Well, you met, you mentioned golf moving to the fall next year. Let, let's start there with what happened in four, a three, a golf. Uh, that actually was last Monday mm-hmm. and uh, took place at different venues around the state. A uh, big shout out to the Minico girls golf team. They're the four a state champion. They won by 10 strokes over Bishop Kelly. And anytime you can beat BK in any sport, I mean, that's a pretty significant accomplishment. Yeah, no kidding. And, uh, and, and those were exactly my thoughts. Um, beat Bishop Kelly. I mean, Bishop Kelly is just the four a standard, just about everything. And, you know, I mean, say what you want about BK private school, blah, 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 blah. I heard that all weekend long and uh so it's nice to nice to see minico out of the uh, great basin come away with the team title congratulations to them that's awesome yeah now minico also had the individual champion in mm-hmm. dallas shockey she finished three strokes ahead of bk's margaret smock and uh another magic valley girl ava schroeder of twin falls took third so that's pretty good top three right there oh yeah not, not bad at all i mean there really is some good golf in the magic valley you know i mean it's always been twin and, and, and Canyon Ridge has been really good. And Minical of late has been really good, you know, so that's really, it's really nice to see. And that's a, uh, you know, Minico's second state title, you know, this year, they won the 4A wrestling uh, as well. So congratulations, Minico got it going on this year. Definitely. And twin falls also uh, had a nice year in terms of they won state volleyball and, uh, girls soccer and they they and now they wrap it up in the spring with a boys golf title but this is like a co-title have you ever seen this before scott twin falls and bishop kelly tied for first they each shot 652 as a team yeah no i have not and uh i mean when you think about the amount of golfers that are playing and the the amount of strokes that you have to tally up to to land on 652 for two teams I mean, that's just unheard of. I mean, go have a chip off, something. Rock, paper, scissors. Do something so you have a, a team title or scorecard playoff. Or, But that wouldn't that be cool, though? I mean, you take, you know, your one and two from each team and you send them out in a foursome and uh, see what happens, you know? I mean, something's got to give. But either way, I mean, it's a team title. So congratulations to Twin Falls Golf Team for that one. Yeah, that was so awesome to see. And again, anytime you can 
best or tie Bishop Kelly in something that's a big accomplishment. Uh, Derek Leckerkirk finished second overall in the individual race for the Bruins. He finished three strokes behind Curtis Seidel of Middleton, who won the title there. And then we we talked about the Kimberly Golf Program mm-hmm. uh, a little earlier this spring on the prep cast, and we talked about how both the boys and the girls would probably be favorites to win the team titles, and, and that's exactly what happened. Kimberly doubles up on boys and girls state golf titles. Yeah, and we saw that one coming. You know, both of those teams brought uh, the majority, if not all, their team back from last year, and they were they were contenders then too. It was just a matter of whether or not uh, they were going to win going away, um, or was it going to be close? And uh, the boys were a lot closer than than we thought, but uh, the girls they dominated. You know, and the and the second place teams are out of the north. You know, Kellogg and Bonners Ferry, you know, so uh, but congratulations to them. We saw that coming, you know, for the boys, uh, you know, Toby Hyder shot a two under par, you know, to win by two strokes over uh, Weezer's Carter Williams, um, you know, shot 71 on both days. I mean, that's pretty consistent. That's pretty consistent golf right there. Uh, and then on the girls side, um, Reese Gary finished third overall, and that might have been the biggest surprise out of the girls' side of things. Um, but uh, the Homedale Uranga girls, the one that uh, really shined at the girls' state tournament, uh, and had a Bonner's Ferry had a player as well, uh, Braylon Bear, play well. But uh, you know, third place finish uh, for Gary out of Kimberly, not too bad, but her team won the title. And I think you know, if you look back at that podcast that we did. You know, she talked about that, too. You know, she said, I'd rather have my team win than me win a, a title. Well, that's exactly what happened. So congratulations. Right. And Reese, of course, is uh, continuing her her golf career at the college level. And, and we'll be keeping an eye on her, certainly. Nice. Um, all right. Let's go to track and field where there was, you know, it seemed like in terms of Magic Valley, there was more excitement at the lower levels. So we'll just kind of go 1A and, and work our way up. Right. Um, 1A girls, Raft River w- wins their fourth consecutive team title, 86.16 points. Oakley second at 68.16. Like everything, Scott, Raft River and Oakley right there, one, two. What is it with those two schools? I, you know what? I, I don't know. And I think, you know, we talked, you know, we talked about this in an earlier podcast this fall. You are talking about two schools right there that just have that, 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 hardworking country, you know, mentality, just that old school, Hey, we're going to work hard. We're going to get it done. Um, you know, and, and that's what I think makes them so special is they're just that small town mentality that, you know, they, they work hard for everything they got, you know, farming community, et cetera, et cetera. Going to practice is the easiest thing they do all day, you know? And so, Raft River Oakley, Raft River Oakley. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. These two are going to go one, two, and just about everything. Yeah. So I'm going to run through the individual winners from the 1A girl side, and you you give me like one or two that stand out to you, Scott. So uh, we'll start with Raft River. They were the champs. Libby Bowden wins the 100, the 200 with a PR, and the long jump. So she's a triple winner. Uh, she also ran the anchor leg on their 4 by 200 meter relay team which took first place uh, along with Sadie Campbell, Abigail Rex, and Jesse Knudsen. Heidi Harper from Raft River won the 400 with a PR, and she ran the anchor leg on the uh, the medley relay team, the 100, 100, 200, 400, along with Campbell, Knudsen, and Rex. So that's where Raft River's points came from. Um, then you look at Oakley, who took second overall in the competition. Addie Mitten won the pole vault at 10-7. That's a new won a state meet record by the way she also won the triple jump so she, so she was a double winner and then oakley's four by four uh relay was won as well uh ali larson joe L. hansen bentley cranny and julia magania on the back stretch and she can fly i saw her play during state basketball she she's really fast and then carrie had a really nice showing individually as well um shaley smith won the 100 meter hurdles and the high jump if you'll remember scott i got to see shaley and carrie compete at that direct com invite at idaho state university and she oh, right. she was disqualified in the in the hurdles right. race so this was a good redemption for her and then um their four by one meter relay team of uh, ashley zarate lexi notman uh Mia, uh Mia Lee, uh hennifer and courtney patterson uh won the four by one and they set a new record uh, for the 1A state meet as well in in that four by one with a time of 51 
19. And then uh, Dally Ellison of Hagerman won the 300 meter hurdles. So what, I mean, what stood out to you from that wow. YMA group? Uh, <laughs> how awesome the Magic Valley is. That's what stood out. <laughs> um, but to, a couple things did. I mean, anytime you're a four time winner at a state meet to like Libby Bowden was, uh, that jumps at you because I mean, that is perfection. You know, you can only really do the four things and you want all of them. I mean, what else is there left to do? But another thing that jumped at me too was the time of Heidi Harper, you know, a, a 1A girl running a 56 in the 400. You know, I mean, that's flying for a, a girl and that's fast for a lot of dudes. You know, um, that's going to beat a lot of guys. And uh, that that stood out to me a little bit as well. But Libby Bowden, the four-time winner at a Rap Forever, that's really what jumped at me more than anything. Now let's go to the 1A boys. We're going to jump down the, the page a little bit here that I sent you, Scott. The 1A boys, um, this was the closest team race of any competition at state. Grace mm -hmm. edges out Lighthouse Christian for the team title by half a point. Grace got 71. That's their first title since 1958, by the way. And and Lighthouse takes second at 70.5. Murtaugh finished third. Uh, have you ever seen a track meet come down to that close of a point total? No, I have not. And, and it doesn't get any closer than that uh, without <laughs> being a tie. Um, you know, there's I've seen one points, two points, three points, and, you know, but never a half a point. And that, that's, those are the kind that make you look back and go, man, if I just would have run faster, if I would have just taken third instead of fourth or whatever the case was. Uh, but, man, yeah, I've never seen that before. Yeah, Walker Gettle of Lighthouse uh, swept the sprints, won the 100, yeah. 200, and 400. He was also the anchor on the 4 by one meter relay team that Lighthouse took first in, along with Kobe Stevenson, Jack DeYoung, and Micah Denny. Carey won the 4 by 200 meter relay. Connor Simpson, Matt Young, Carson Perks, and Riley Morey there. And then Perks, Morey, and Young all ran legs on Carey's uh, 4 by 400 state championship relay team, along with Chase Benyon. And Junior Benitez of Murtaugh won the long jump. And uh, Murtaugh doubled up on the jumps as Chandler Jones won the triple jump. So pretty impressive performances there from the 1A boys. Set. But uh, to me, Walker Gettle sweeping the sprints, that's that's really hard to do. Oh, it, it does. And it just shows the versatility of, of what he can do. I mean, 100, 200, 400, that, that's impressive. I mean, generally, you're going to find somebody that can do one or two of those. And usually the 100, 200 go together. The 400 is... Uh, 400 is what I ran, and it's awful. <laughs> the only thing that might rival that is the 800, you know. But uh, once you get out of the 100, 200, you start to get into that other mid-distance, whatever that is. But to win them all, man, Gettle, congratulations to him. That's impressive. Way to go, Walker Gettle. Uh, 2A, really, all that we had for the Magic Valley was Kyle Christensen of Valley. He won the long jump and triple jump. He was kind of the favorite coming in, and – uh, yep. He had won the long jump in, in previous years, so it's nice to see a Valley Viking uh, get some recognition at state. All right, 3A boys. This is where uh, Kimberly swept boys and girls golf. They end up taking second in both boys and girls track and field. We knew with the Kimberly boys, you know, Gatlin and Jackson Bear were going to fill the stat sheet, but the question was, could they get enough uh, from other places to hold off a Sugar Salem team that's always deep? And the answer was not quite enough, but for Kimberly – Another outstanding season. Gatlin Bear wins the 100, 200, and triple jump. Jackson Bear wins the 110 hurdles, long jump, and pole vault. Uh, a couple of new meet records were set in there as well um, for the Bears. And then you had Filer win the 4 by 2 relay. Tegan Twos, Duncan Grant, Anthony Ippolito, and Wyatt DeFord. And Buell won the 4 by 4 relay with uh, Ish Salas, Justin LaJoy, Josh Loveless and Kyler Kelly. But the story here is the, the Bear brothers, Jackson, of course, graduating. Gatlin still just a sophomore. Yeah. I mean, we knew that they were going to pile on the points, you know, and for Kimberly to have a shot to beat Sugar, the Bears were going to have to win everything. You know, everything they got into, they were going to have to win. And then they were going to have to get just a little bit of help uh, because you're right. That Sugar team is so deep. Um, and we saw, was it a couple of years ago, uh, Sugar win – what seven state titles in a year or something like that, or it was just ridiculous. Um, sugar is the, 
is the BK of the East in a way, uh, as far as their 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 constant prowess in just about everything. Um, but uh, we knew that Kimberly was going to have a shot, but it was going to have to fall in the right direction. And unfortunately for them, it, it didn't quite do that, but it doesn't overshadow uh, the Bears. We knew that was coming. We knew what they were going to do, and boy, did they perform. Definitely, and, and Sugar Salem's got a legendary coach in Brett Hill. Uh, this championship that he won was his 50th in his career between cross-country and track, between a career at Firth and Sugar Salem. So 50 career championships is unheard of uh, in the Thank state of Idaho. Um, so the, the Bear brothers broke three 3A state records, and they scored a combined 76 points. Uh, Jackson uh, set a new 3A meet record in the 110 hurdles. The previous record holder was his older brother, Peyton Bear. He set that in 2019, so that record stood for all of three years, and, and little bro got that. Um, and then Jackson also set a new record in the long jump um, for the 3A meet, and again, that was his older brother, Peyton Bear's record. So Peyton's yeah. like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And, and there's uh, there's more bears coming. Um, so I, I think if you are an older bear – then all you're doing is you're just throwing the gauntlet for your younger siblings. That's all you're doing, giving them a mark. You know, I think the last one through is going to be the one that has the best chance to hold it all. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And then Gatlin Bear uh, won the 200 in 2154, but he ran 2141 during the prelims, uh, and he broke a 23-year-old 3A state meet record in the 200. So Gatlin Bear, uh, and again, just a sophomore. He's got two more years to, to continue to prove what he can do. <coughs> on, on the 3A girls' side, Kimberly took second as a team. Chloe Ward won the 400 and the long jump for Kimberly, and she also ran the anchor leg on uh, Kimberly's title-winning 4 by 200 meter relay team with Hannah Baird, Brianna Jacques, and, and Shelby Muller. And then uh, Evelyn Hollis of Kimberly also won the 100-meter hurdles. So the Kimberly girls said, hey, we got some athletes too, and they had a nice showing at the 3A state meet. Um, and then at the 4A meet, um, on the girls' side, Lindsay Searle, we just talked about her from Burley yeah. uh, last week or the week prior. She won the 100-meter hurdles. Um, it was a duel between her and a girl from Skyline, and the Skyline girl clipped uh, the the last or second-to-last hurdle, and that allowed Searle to, to win a really tight race. So congratulations to her. And then Twin Falls had the uh, winning 4 by one relay team with Maya Richardson, Hallie Walker, Madeline Tingey, and Morgan Graham. And then four completely different athletes also win the four by 400 meter relay yeah. for Twin Falls. Uh, Olivia Oler, Tiffany Humphreys, Genevieve Bingham, and I guess Richardson ran on both. But that's pretty impressive from Twin Falls. Oh, yeah, no question. I mean, and, and the fact that you're doing it with the seven different girls, too, uh, that that's that's super impressive. And, you know, I mean, Twin is incredibly deep when it comes to their, their track and their running events and cross country. I mean, they are just runners over there. They do a great job, but I was really, I was really pleased to see Lindsey Searle win the hundred meter hurdles. I mean, they're taking off to Weber State, uh, and that's a nice little feather to have in your cap. State champ, you know, peace out, and uh, good for her. Yep, that was really awesome to see on the boys' side. Um, so get this, Scott: the four hundred meter dash, the the previous four A meet record was set in 2017 by a kid from Ridgeview, Cade Linder. The time was 49.05. The top three finishers at this year's meet all eclipsed that time. So the top three finishers all broke the previous record, but it was Dalton Munkris from Twin Falls who had the best time, won the 4A 400 title in 48.60. That is smoking for the 400. That is crazy <laughs> fast. You know, and the thing about those kind of things is, you know, you're always going to be the weather is always going to play a part of this. You know, um, if, if you've got a, a headwind, you've got a tailwind, if you have no wind, if it's cold. I mean, those things all affect outdoor running, you know, and uh, nothing has nothing has slowed Mon Chris down this year. You know, I've watched him run a couple of times uh, during kind of regular track meets in crappy weather and Nothing slows him down. This kid can flat out fly. Uh, it might be a while before we see that record get 
eclipsed. I mean, 40 and 60 is that that could stand for a long time. Um, he also Monkris was the anchor on the Bruins uh, title winning four by four relay team with Jesus Herrera Barriga, Jacob Stevens and Matthew Bjornberg. So uh, Twin Falls showing up at the 4A boys meet. Uh, let's move on to tennis, Scott. Generally, oh. tennis is dominated by teams from the Treasure Valley because of the nice weather and they're able to play outdoors a lot more during the season. But uh, this 4A boys tennis title was crazy. The top three teams um, were separated by like five points. And so Wood River, despite not having a single uh, champion, they didn't have a singles, doubles, or mixed doubles first place finisher, their depth allowed them to win the 4A title. Yeah, no, and that's exactly right. I mean, depth at these tournaments is everything. I mean, you can get in track sometimes one athlete that's going to get 75% of your points. Um, but in some sports, the depth is going to win out. And that's what happened at Wood River boys. They are so good from top to bottom. They may not have the, the, the best doubles player, the best men's singles player, whatever, but man, they've got a lot of them and they can all play tennis. And so I was, it was good to see Wood River, you know, great basin team, uh, get a four, a title, especially over, you know, uh, a powerhouse like Bonneville and, and, and Ridgeview is no no slouch on the tennis court as well. So congratulations to Wood River. Yeah, it was really awesome. Um, the best finish from a Wood River uh, singles or doubles team was their their doubles team, Jake Simon and Gus Sabina. They took second overall, lost in the in the finals to a, to a pair from Bonneville. Sabina was a really good singles player last year, and so moving to doubles this year, it's always interesting to see how that adjustment's made and. Uh, they did just fine. So congrats to Wood River, your 4A boys tennis champs. All right, let's get to baseball now, Scott. And let, let's start with the 4A um, tournament. That's the tournament that you were broadcasting at for IdahoSports.com. Uh, mm -hmm. tw Twin Falls, we talked about all year that they're a dangerous team. They've got good program pedigree, and people better not sleep on the Bruins. And they knock out the top seed Middleton in the semis 2-1, to one, and they get to the championship where they run into that Bishop Kelly buzzsaw. But what did you see from Twin Falls at the 4A State Baseball Tournament? Uh, they were missing one pitcher. I mean, that was really all it was. You know, I mean, if you want to win a state baseball title, you've got to have depth on the mound. Twin has two pitchers, period, the end. That's all they got. And they, they had to burn them both in the first two, two games, and they had nothing left. Um to throw at Bishop Kelly in the state title game. But it, you know, it was one of those things to where they, they were in tight games. You know, they won the first game seven to one against Pocatello, but you know, I, it was tied going into the seventh inning and twin falls exploded for six runs in the top of the seven. So they couldn't pull Hardesty out of the game. Um, and same thing with the, against Middleton. They had Otho Savage going, and Dylan, I, I know him as Dylan, um, couldn't come out of the game because he was in, in control. The minute he they pull him, they let Middleton back in it. So they had to burn both of their pitchers. They get to the championship game, and they've got absolutely nothing left. And that was really the bottom line. Yeah, and, and we see this all the time, and we're going to talk about it in just a second. That's the 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 risk you play. Do you pull your pitcher to try and save him for that third day, or do you just worry yes. about – getting to Saturday and, and, you know, see what shakes out from there. Uh, J Jerome was there as well. You know, they went two and out. They were the eight seed overall, but what a, what an accomplishment for Jerome. Like you said, twin Minico, twin Minico, it's always twin Minico. And so for somebody else to emerge and get the state, I thought was really nice. Yeah, it was. And, and for a first year coach, uh, Trevor Osler, you know, it was a nice little feather in his cap too, just to, you know, show that, he's arrived and he's going to start building a program. And, you know, Jerome never had any pitchers. They just were gritty. You know, they would just get it done by committee on the Hill. Um, and they would win a lot of one run games, but they would battle you, battle you and just hang around. And that's how they got through it. And so, you know, they were by far the eight seed there, but, uh, but it's, it's a nice for the program. And it was nice to see him there and get that experience. Definitely. Let's move to the 3A tournament. That's where I was at, Scott. And yeah. Kimberly, Kimberly came in as the number two seed overall and and kind of a heavy favorite to meet up with Marsh Valley in the championship. And so they're playing Fruitland in their very first game. And Fruitland is throwing their best pitcher. And he went all seven innings and pitched incredibly well. 
and Fruitland got the win. So what happened? Well, Kimberly started. They really had two pitchers that I don't think anybody could match in the entire field in Brennan Chapel and Jacob Cummins, or excuse me, uh, Jackson Cummins. Uh -huh. Yep. And so they started Chapel that first game. Kimberly did on the mound and Kimberly was up three to one through three innings. Chapel was in cruise control and they pull Chapel to save him for Saturday. And this is where we talk about that's the risk is do you have the pitching to get you to Saturday? You got to worry about winning the game at hand and, and the, the Kimberly bullpen, it was, you know, it ended up being three, I think three different relievers that came on, couldn't hold the lead. They kind of self imploded. And, and they allowed Fruitland to score seven unanswered runs to, to come back and win eight to three in a game that was never really close after the, after the fifth inning. And so for Kimberly, then they turn around on, on Friday and Saturday and, and you saw the potential of what could have been if they just could have held on to that lead on Thursday because uh, Friday, Cummins comes out and throws a no-hitter against, uh, uh, against uh, Homedale in a loser-out game. And then Saturday, they're playing for the consolation title over Snake River, and Chapel starts on the mound, pitches the whole way, and he throws a one-hitter. And so Kimberly does come home with the trophy, but, man, if they could have just gotten past Fruitland on Thursday, I think Kimberly would have won won the title. Yeah, you know what? And that's, that's exactly what we're talking about, too. It's like how do you play the game and strategize with two solid pitchers? And, you know, and I see what Kimberly was trying to do but you got to win the game you're in first and then you let everything else take care of itself. And that's what twin did. Twin could have done the exact same thing and just, you know, folded and then had one of their aces ready to go for the consolation final. But why, why do that when you could play for a state title and you never know, you, you just never know. Maybe the bats just explode and something happens to their starter or their ace or, he doesn't have his stuff first. Anything can happen, but you got to get there first. And uh, and we saw what happens when you think ahead. Yep. And and I wasn't surprised that they they pulled Chapel. I was very surprised that they didn't put him back in to pitch once you know they got into a dicey situation and and ultimately gave up the lead because a pitcher can come back in to pitch if he's been removed. We I saw Fruitland do that numerous times. So I think that was probably what was most surprising to me there um but for kimberly it, it was a great season overall they come home with a trophy and and um yep. they'll have a good nucleus to build around again next year at the 2a tournament wendell was representing district four for the first time in a couple of years and they they had some wild games scott they they made it to saturday two of their three games had to go extra innings they, they lost to firth which got all the way to the championship in on on opening day six to five and eight innings and you know, that's a player two away from Wendell being in the semifinals. Uh, then they shut out Orofino 5 nothing to get to the consolation final. And this was a wild game. You'll look at the final score. You'll see that Wendell beat Chalice Mackey 12-5. to But that game went nine innings. Wendell kind of exploded in the ninth inning to, to pull away and get the win. But what a tournament for Wendell. Oh, no kidding. And what a send-off for Coach Marty Hurd, too, because uh, that was kind of his farewell tour. And, and he had a great team. But – Man, you, you, you get to a state tournament, you got two extra inning games. What a pitcher's nightmare for the for the pitch count and all this. I mean, talk about testing your depth. Um, but uh, Wendell made it through, and uh, congratulations to them. I think, you know, a lot of eyes were on Wendell uh, going to that tournament because they knew they had a good team. Uh, but they knew they were going to run into some pretty good teams like, well, Firth, for example, in that opening round. So close. It could have gone the other way. Um, but still a great showing for Wendell and Coach Hurd. Yeah, and it was nice to see Wendell turn around and get a win over Orofino after a deflating loss on Thursday. A lot of times you'll see teams kind of pack it in and, and shut it down mm -hmm. and go to and out. So Wendell, their ability to battle back was really impressive. 1A state tournament, Glens Ferry was there. They finished sixth overall. Uh, they, they compete in District 3 for, for 1A baseball because they're the only District 4 team that, that has baseball. Um, District 3 got swept by the White Pine League. White Pine League District 2 went 4-0. and against District 3 in the opening round. So everybody was on the uh, other side of the bracket. Glens Ferry got to the consolation final where they lost to North Star Charter. Um, and then a similar thing kind of happened over at the, the 1A softball tournament as we'll transition into softball now where, yeah. again, the North kind of flexed their muscles and took care of the, the teams from down south pretty easily. Um, 
Glens Ferry did battle back to take third overall, though, and they almost won that third place game to challenge Potlatch for the championship, but they lost to Genesee eight to six. And so for Glens Ferry, the defending state champs in one A softball, a third place trophy, nothing to sneeze at. No, not at all. I mean, anytime you take home hardware, that's great. And, and Genesee was a solid team. They battled, you know, and they come, you're coming on with hardware. What else could you ask for? Yep. Speaking of third place finishes, there were a lot of those from the Magic Valley at State Softball. Uh, Twin mm-hmm. Falls uh, took third at the 4A tournament. They lost to Valley View in the third place game, eight to four, and and missed out on a chance to to rechallenge Bishop Kelly. Twin and Bishop Kelly had gotten to that undefeated semifinal game Saturday morning. Um, now they lost that game twenty one to four. I don't think anybody was beating Bishop Kelly in softball this year, um, but for Twin, you never know, and they they just miss out. But boy, third place overall for Twin Falls is a is a great season for the Bruins. Oh yeah, no question. I mean, especially when they lost the the district. Uh, title this year they were the second place team coming out of the great basin uh jerome won that title and you know and i think for the twin falls lady bruins it just kind of woke them up a little bit and realized you know hey we're better than this and uh well as as it turned out in the max preps they drove all the way to post falls to play jerome in the opening round and uh and beat them in a you know relatively tight game halfway through and Twin pulled away, and then Jerome had to come around the backside, and they just ran out of gas. And uh, But Bishop Kelly was the story because Bishop Kelly, nobody was touching them. And, I mean, they were throwing up 19 runs, 21 runs. I mean, these girls were just scoring runs, and there was nobody that could keep up with them. Yeah, and Bishop Kelly was the story of the weekend in a lot of different sports, obviously. Softball, no exception. Uh, 3A tournament was kind of wild, too. We talked about that 3A District 4 being up and down all year. Buell and Filer are the teams that survive in advance to get the state gooding. The regular season conference champ went two and out in districts. And how about this journey for Buell? The tournament was being held in Buell, which I heard went off flawlessly, by the way. Buell was a great site for that 3A softball tournament. Um, Buell lost their first round game to Weezer, the team that would finish second, and they lost a close one, eight to seven. And so they're they're staring down the barrel, right? They're one loss away from going two and out. Well, they win three in a row. Yeah. And they get all the way to that third place game where they fall to Homedale. And and along the way, um, they knock out Filer, the defending 3A champs, 12 to 2. Yeah. So so Buell made it further than Filer did and t- take home a third place trophy what a season yeah no kidding especially to do it in their in their hometown you know in front of their home crowd and uh, you know how, how close it could have gone the other way uh losing that one run game but man just to turn around and win three in a row is impressive that's hard to do because eventually you're going to run out of gas and uh, the teams are going to get better each game that you play and uh, you know that's that's really awesome for buell and you know, for Filer, the defending champs, you know, they win their first game over Timberlake uh, before falling to Homedale, eventual champ Homedale, in a one-run game. Um, and, of course, got stomped by Buell 12-2. to So, I mean, it was, you know, overall not too bad for, for Buell and Filer, especially for Buell, though. That's, that's the story there. Yeah, that, that was a crazy tournament. And Homedale actually came through and had to beat Weezer twice to win the 3A title, and yeah. they did it, which is – that's nails that's right there. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Uh, Declo Softball was at the 2A State uh, Softball Tournament as well. They went two and out, but it was a nice season uh, for the Hornets representing District 4 as well. So wanted to give them a shout-out also. Yep, of course. Yep. And a lot of good showing from our Magic Valley teams down here at State Tournament. So many things happening in the spring. Uh, it, if you're a sports fan of all that, it was really fun and difficult to keep up with it all because it was all happening so fast and all the time. And from our perspective, we're trying to keep up with it all uh, on IdahoSports.com. And yeah. uh, man, it was frantic, but we got her done. Yeah, it was fast and furious, no doubt. And Scott, I am shocked we got through all of that info in just over half an hour. That's very impressive. Way to stick to your times. Well, I'm just following your lead, man. You're spooning me all the information, and I'm just going, yes, Brandon. Yes, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Yeah, it, t- it took me all day yesterday to compile all that stuff, not just for this prep cast, but for all the other ones we do around the, the state. Yeah, I, don't know. I don't know how you do it. I <laughs> yeah. really have no idea how you do it. But it was nuts. Too, my friend. 
Yep. All right. Well, that's it for the school year, Scott. But, uh, you know, we're not going away just because it's summer break. You know, we're not going to. So we will take next week off just because it's the end of the school year. I think we've earned it a week off to recharge, refresh. And then we're going to we're going to come back with some offseason prep casts where we'll bring on guests. We'll bring on some coaches and some athletes. You know, I want to I want to get those bear boys on. Talk to them a little bit. See what see what uh, their experience at state was like so stay tuned for that we'll we'll be around this summer we'll we'll have more specific kind of uh specific player coach type interviews but i think that'll be a lot of fun scott yeah it will it will give us a chance to to dive into some things that you know we don't have the box scores for so let's get into some stories let's get into uh, some player bios and profiles and and uh learn about some of our magic valley athletes Yep, that'll be a lot of fun. So, Scott, I know you've got graduation this week at Jerome. Tomorrow night. Yeah. Tomorrow night. So, we're, yeah, we're trying to get everything organized here. Graduation parade tomorrow. Uh, having it outside on a football field. Finally, we're going to have some weather that's going to cooperate. Uh, we're just waiting to close the book here. And it's so crazy busy uh, at the end of the year for administrators and teachers and everything else. It's just insane. Definitely. Well, thanks for all the work you do throughout the entire school year. And uh, the finish line is just ahead of you. So don't stumble. <laughs> no, there's so much to do before I can cross that line. It just seems so far away. Right. All right. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in once again to another edition of the Magic Valley Prep Cast. We'll see you back here in two weeks. For Scott Burton, I'm Brandon Bainey. Thanks for tuning in on IdahoSports.com.